Today I'm going to show you how to make beautiful renders of Minecraft using Blender and a program called Mineways. Both these programs are free and I'll link to them in the description. Um, you can go and download them and basically make beautiful pictures like this. Okay, so I'm not going to actually show you how to use Mineways for the original export because it's pretty straightforward. Um, but once you've done that, um, you go over here and here actually I'm going to start a new uh, Blender project uh, just to show you that it's completely from scratch. So anyway, I'm going to delete the cube and I'm going to import the file that was exported. It's an OBJ, so wait for an OBJ. Alright, I went ahead and skipped in the video. So here you can see we have the Minecraft area that I exported. Um, it's kind of big, so I'm going to scale it down by pressing S and then just moving my cursor like that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually scale about this big. Now over here, you're going to want to expand this so you can see, maybe even expand that out a bit. Uh, you can see that you have all of the different types of blocks as a separate thing. So you can pretty easily uh, access them and change their material properties. Um, the first thing that you need to do after you've imported this is prepare it, prepare all the different um, textures and materials to actually render in Blender. Um, I'm just going to deselect everything. So that would normally be a painstaking process. You'd have to go into each one and change a bunch of settings. Um, I found a script online, a link to the person's original YouTube video that I found it in, and I actually improved it a bit. So what you're going to do is you're going to click down here and drag to make a new panel, change it to text editor, oh gosh, there it is. Um, turn all these on, I turn them on, you don't really have to, it just makes it look better. I'm going to open the file and I will uh, upload the file and paste it in my comments or not in the comments, in the description, sorry. And this is really easy to use. Basically what this does is you click Run Script, and um, all the materials have all the things that need to be applied to them so that you can use them. All the textures have the alpha channels applied, um, the water is actually somewhat transparent. You don't see it here because this is in object mode. If I went to textured mode, or sorry, not, if I went to texture shading, you would see the textures. Um, obviously, these are simple. The shadows are kind of, they're not actually how they're going to look, gonna look like when they're rendered. Um, and even if they were, we don't have the lights set up how we want them or anything. I'm just going to go back to solid for the simplicity, but the thing is you need to run this first. Um, and it'll take care of most of the grunt work, and after that it's really easy. So now, um, the first thing I need to do is set up my light. So you're going to click, right click on the light to select it, go over here to light properties, and change it from point to sun, because we want it to be like the sun. Um, normally I put the energy up just a bit, because it'll look good, and I get, like to give it a warmer feeling, so I change the color kind of warm. Don't go overkill or else everything will look yellow and not warm. It'll look weird. Just a little bit of tint. Um, then you can change the positioning. It's easier if you go to view left so you can actually see where it is. And I kind of like to make it um, at about this angle. I, I'm rotating it by pressing R and then I'm rotating on the x-axis because that's the one we're on. And we're rotated just about that and that looks like a good angle for me. So, cool. Now we have the sun set up. So now we basically have the lamp set up. Um, so just one thing to note, shadows will look better if you turn the samples down here up to more than one. For a final render, I usually use 16. That'll take a long time to render, so let's just get a good idea with maybe three samples right now. Um, other than that, we need to set up the camera. So what I like to do is I like to 
get to a certain point that I want to render. And let's just get somewhere that we have water, because I'm going to show you some interesting water effects later on. Let's start here. So, in order to make the camera go to your viewport, you do Control, Alt, and then Zero on your numpad. Alright, I have it set um, facing the way I want. Um, I want to get some more scenery, so I'm going to change the focal length a bit bigger. Or, sorry, smaller. And you could change the sensor if you want. Just play with the things to get the right perspective and size that you want. Alright, that looks good. And so if you want to see this, what this looks like so far, you can just go over here, change that to UV Image Editor, press F12, and it will render. Now as you can see, that already looks really good, but I'll bet we can make it even better if we make the water look better. So how you do that is you go over here, and select water, or sorry, stationary water. And that's the water that's not moving, because in Minecraft there are two separate blocks, the stationary water and the water that's flowing. So in stationary water, go over to material, and you're going to want to turn mirror on. And let's give us a bit more space in the editor pane right here so I can see both of this and the reflection. Um, the biggest thing right you want to do here is change the reflection amount. And you can kind of see a preview up there on the sphere. It's obviously not very good because it doesn't really give you any idea what's going on, but I usually put it around 2... Point, uh, sorry, point 0.2... Point 0.17. Um, so let's render that and see how that looks. Just by changing the reflection only on the stationary water. Okay, so now you see we got some really nice reflections in the water, because it's acting like a mirror. Um, and while that is accurate for how it looks like in the game, because it's nice and flat, it doesn't look as good as it could. So how about we try to add some surface ripple like regular water would in the real world? Um, there is a tricky thing with this. And the main thing is that when MineWaves exports, let me go into edit mode, uh, you'll see that if I select a single face and I move it around, it's actually not connected to any of the surrounding vertices. It's completely separate. So what I would do in order to make it ripply is apply a, uh, I think it's a distort, we'll find out later, and then I would subdivide. But if you subdivide with them all split up like this, it doesn't work right. So the first thing you need to do is press A twice to select everything, press the W key to bring up this menu, and click Remove Doubles. And what that does is it removes any vertices that are touching um, in the same place, and up there you saw for a second it said it removed a whole bunch of vertices. So now, if I select a single face and moved it, you would see that it is connected. So that's exactly what we want. Now we're ready to start adding some modifiers. Um, the modifier that I wanted was Displace, not Distort. Click Displace. Uh, you see how it moves it up a bunch. Don't worry about that yet. Just click New Texture. It'll automatically add a Cloud Texture, which is perfectly fine for what we want. Turn the Strength down to 0.05. And you'll see that that gives you a very subtle uh, ripple. And you can't really see it in this view because, like I said, it's not really meant for that. This is just meant for giving an idea. So if we rendered this out really quick, we would see this. And you'll see that the water, while it's certainly rippling, it looks pretty nasty. And that's because there's no smoothing. It's just all those vertices you saw are moved up and down a slight amount, um, depending on the texture that was loaded. But you want it to look better than that. Like, you know, it's just natural water. So the next modifier I want to add to do that is called subdivide, or subdivision surface. And 
what that does is it takes the faces and divides them and then takes their angles and finds a good middle ground between them. And basically, if you if it does it several times, and you'll see that you have how many subdivisions to do, it smooths it out. So if you had a cube and you subdivide it enough, it would eventually turn into a sphere, um, just as a, an example. So right here, keeping the defaults is fine. Um, it, one subdivision on the view would just be, if you're looking at edit mode, it will only subdivide it once, and you can't really see it very well because the variations are very slight. Um, render, subdividing twice. Um, that's a very low amount of subdivisions usually, but for the water, you don't really need that many. You might be able to go up to three or four and maybe get slight more quality, but any more than that, it's not really worth it. So if we render this out really quick, just by adding the subdivision surface modifier, you'll see that you get a very pretty looking uh, water render. And like I said, um, you can actually make that look even smoother and even better if you turn the subdivision up more. Uh, more than four, you don't really need it. Um, three is probably a good setting. Um, you can even mess with the strength of the displace and that'll make the water more turbulent. Just keep in mind that it may go over the blocks and it may look pretty bad. Um, that's pretty much all there is to rendering with this. Um, just a few notes really quick on how to make sure that your final export is really good. Um, I already covered that changing the number of samples on the light will make the shadows look more accurate. Um, you know, that's kind of important, but it's not nearly um, as important as changing the sampling for the gather. And what this does is that script turned on something called ambulant um, occlusion, I think they pronounce it. And basically what that is, is you'll see over here that the shadows aren't 100% black. And by default in Blender, all shadows are 100% black. So ambient occlusion just basically fills that in with light that's reflected off the environment. And right here, it doesn't look too bad, partially because it's low resolution and partially because it's probably recorded. But if I made this like 4K quality, this image, and zoomed in right here on the shelf in the sand, you'd see that it looks grainy, like you might like you might expect from taking a picture in the dark and encoding it in a JPEG format. So to get rid of that, you just turn these samples up. Um, 16 is what I would use for a really good render. It'll take a long time, but it'll look really good. Um, and the last sample setting, the third sample setting, is under this tab, and it will be anti-aliasing. And it's right there. And I'm sure you're all familiar with this. You have anti-aliasing in games. What that does is whenever there's a line, instead of having, you know, the very rough pixels, it tries to smooth them out by adding colors in between. And it just makes things look better. I would turn this up to 16 if I want a really good render at a very high resolution. Uh, that's just up to personal preference on what you're comfortable with. Uh, you know, <clears throat> other than that, that's pretty much it. If you wanted to add some text in here, there are million and one tutorials on how to add extruded text in Blender. You can look them up there. If you wanted to animate the camera, any generic, you know, animation tutorial for Blender w applies here. Um, basically, once you get all the material set up and the water set up, everything's just kind of easy. It's basically set up for you to explore and use however you want. Um, thank you for watching this tutorial, and I might post some more tutorials. I was actually going to experiment with making night scenes and actually applying lighting of torches and stuff to walls, but I don't know. We'll see.